Prince Whipple is a name that virtually no American has ever heard of. But ask nearly all of those same Americans if they know the name of Mr. Whipple from the 1980s Charmin toilet paper commercials, and the answer will most certainly be yes. Tragically, the reason nobody knows African-American founder Prince Whipple is that conspiring men had worked diligently to erase these great black American men from recorded history. Why? If blacks don't feel connected to the people who founded our nation, if those who believe the Constitution is a living, breathing document can make blacks feel that they have absolutely nothing in common with them, then there's a much better chance that they'll feel less connected to the nation itself and the Constitution upon which it is founded. Thus, they can enlist an entire race of people to help them change the Constitution. Prince Whipple received his last name from the man who purchased and owned him as a slave, William Whipple. He received his first name, Prince, because in Ghana, Africa, he was a prince. Prince was born free and affluent in 1750 in a village called Amabo, which was probably a Namabo in present-day Ghana. He and a relative were sent by their parents to study abroad in America. Instead, the two young men were kidnapped and sold into slavery in North America. What started out for Prince as a royal life filled with freedom, promise, and learning became a nightmare of belonging to someone as their property and being forced into labor on behalf of that buyer. But instead of becoming hateful and vengeful, angry, Prince somehow resisted those urges and emotions and put the multiple skills he'd learned back at home in Ghana into practice in his new life. The man who purchased Prince, William Whipple, was a wealthy merchant from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. He immediately became so trusted in Whipple's home that of Prince, William said, nothing can go on right without Prince. William relied on Prince for virtually everything. He was large in stature, good-looking, and no doubt, at least in part because of his upbringing in Africa, extremely well-mannered and behaved. William Whipple eventually became a member of the Continental Congress and in 1776 had Prince at his side when he signed the Declaration of Independence. By 1777, William was made a general in the Continental Army and was sent to fight with the British in the campaign of Saratoga, New York. With him, as always, was his trusted slave, Prince. On the way to Saratoga, General Whipple turned to him and said, Prince, we may be called into action. In which case, I trust you will behave like a man of courage and fight bravely for the country. Sir, replied Prince in a manly tone, I have no wish to fight and I have no inducement. But had I my liberty, I would fight in defense of this country to the last drop of my blood. Well said, said the general. Prince, from this moment forward, you are free. Prince fulfilled his end of the bargain. He fought valiantly at Saratoga for the American forces, who were initially pushed back. But then, on October 7, 1777, surrounded and routed the British, winning a decisive victory. And when the British general surrendered, the Americans turned the tide of war. The victory finally convinced France to recognize the United States of America and officially become an ally. Later, in 1778, Prince Whipple, now officially an American patriot and hero who put his life on the line fighting for freedom of all men, also fought freely in the Battle of Rhode Island. Because William didn't completely fulfill his end of the bargain that he had made with Prince at Saratoga and officially freed him from that moment on, in 1779, Prince was among 20 enslaved men who signed the petition of 20 slaves of Portsmouth to the General Assembly for the abolition of slavery in New Hampshire. Their petition was a brave and very compelling argument, which stated, To the Honorable Council and the House of Representatives of said state, we the petitioners, natives of Africa, now forcefully detained in slavery in said state, most humbly sheweth that the God of nature gave them life and freedom upon the terms of the most perfect equality with other men. End quote. Even though it echoed the sentiments expressed in America's founding document, the petition was shelved and slavery was not abolished in New Hampshire until 1857. The nation he loved still hadn't seen its way clear to rid itself and its black patriots of the evil of slavery.
Prince, however, would finally experience the burning desire of his heart to become a free man. Shortly after America defeated the British and gained its freedom, William Whipple finally lived up to his word and freed his trusted servant, Prince Whipple, in 1784. Prince Whipple lived out the remainder of his life in freedom. He died in 1797, was buried in the North Cemetery, and was mourned by the white residents of town as well as the blacks, who always considered him their prince. In 1851, a German-born painter who had grown up in the United States but went back to Germany as an adult was in despair over his homeland's revolutions of 1848. So he painted the scene of George Washington crossing the Delaware to inspire his fellow countrymen in Germany to remember the principles of the American Revolution as they fought for their own. In the painting, at the front of the boat with Washington as he crossed the Delaware, is a young black man. According to a black historian who compiled the history in 1855 of blacks who helped found this nation, William C. Nell, that black man, is Prince Whipple. Historians have since discovered that Prince Whipple did not participate in the Battle of Trenton, but was instead with William Whipple back in Baltimore, Maryland. It is now believed that the painting is no more than a composite of all the blacks who helped America gain her independence, including Prince Whipple. The fact that historians now say the man in the boat is not specifically Prince Whipple in no way diminishes his role in American history. When the painting made its way to the United States in 1851, it arrived in a deeply divided country, a nation divided over the system of enslaving fellow human beings. At its initial viewing, over 50,000 Americans saw and were inspired by the painting. It helped remind true patriots of the truths contained within the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Prince Whipple certainly believed in, stood for, and fought for, and eventually experienced those rights. He is indelibly etched into the fabric of this great nation and it's American.